Uh, this year does mark the 30th anniversary of the signing of the Oslo Accords, a landmark effort for peace between Israel and the Palestinians. But yet, as current events in Gaza have made clear, any sign of calm does not seem to be on the horizon. Here to discuss this further with me is columnist for Unheard, Thomas Farsi. Good morning, Thomas. Hi, good morning. Thanks very much indeed for, for joining us. This is a story um, which obviously has taken a tragic turn, but it's been going on really for decades. Um, where yeah. do you see it at the moment in terms of that kind of time frame? If you look along since the days of Yasser Arafat, since the days of um, conversations going on at the White House, since the days of, um, you know, a two-state solution, you know, are we further along or have we sort of fallen off a cliff? No, I, I think we've never been uh, further, uh, you know, from the chance of reaching a lasting peace than, than we've ever been. Um, but what I try to do in, I, I just written an article, you know, where I go over the history of that, of the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. And in fact, uh, there are a lot of myths and misconceptions uh, around that process. Uh, I, I think a lot of people think that uh, we often were, you know, we were very close to reaching a deal uh, that would have given Palestine a its own state. And uh, I think a lot of people also think that due to the intransigence of the Palestinians, uh, you know, that that deal was never actually um, uh, reached. And so I think a lot of people uh, see Israel as having offered uh, Israel, uh, I mean, Palestine, its own state and the Palestinians are refusing that. Um, and in fact, when you look at the actual uh, at the actual deals that were proposed, if you look at the actual negotiations, what you see is that, in fact, there was a good deal of intransigence on both sides, um, uh, including the Israeli side, because if you look at, for example, the I mean, the first time that Israel actually proposed to um, the Palestinians their own state was only in 2000. So I think that that already says a lot. So until 2000, even though the Palestinians, uh, you know, and the Palestine Liberation Organization led by Arafat had accepted the existence of the state of Israel, you know, way back in the 80s and had in fact, you know, was ready to accept a two-state solution, essentially going back to uh, the pre-1967 um, borders as far back as the 80s. It wasn't until the Camp David summit in 2000 that Israel actually proposed um, giving Palestine its own state. Uh, so this was a big step forward. But when you look at the details of the proposal, what you see is that, in fact, what that state amounted to was a degree of self-administration over Gaza and over parts of the West Bank, not even all the West Bank, parts of the West Bank, uh, you know, because there are you know, hundreds of uh, Israeli settlements, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of Israeli settlers that live in the West Bank, uh, which would not have been removed under that agreement. So what you have is a, you know, a West Bank, a Palestinian West Bank that looks a bit like a Swiss cheese. Mm. Uh, so kind of enclaves in some cases surrounded by um, Israeli um, settlements and the Gaza Strip. And of course, the two territories are separated, uh, not to mention the fact that the external borders uh, would have been controlled by Israel. Of course, much of the security would have been controlled by Israel. Uh, Gazan uh, airspace waters uh, would have been controlled by Israel. So, you know, it wasn't it, it really wasn't something uh, that anyone would consider, you know, amounting to you know actual independence to an actual uh, uh, state. Uh, so it's really no wonder that that um, uh, offer was ultimately rejected by the by the Palestinians. But at the same time, I think it would be also wrong to simply blame the Israeli government because if you look at the poll, what the polls said in Israel back in the late '90s and early 2000s, they thought that the government was already offering too much to the Palestinians. And so what you have is essentially an existential uh, you know, a, 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 a disagreement over what the Palestinians should uh, should have. Uh, what was too little for the Palestinians at the time was considered to be too much by most Israelis. Um, and so it's no wonder that the two sides really did not come to an agreement and couldn't find any middle ground in the end. But I think it's important to realize that, uh, you know, this was also because the offer on the table was actually wasn't this, uh, uh, you know, great deal that a lot of people uh, probably uh, think it was. And so, um, but I mean, and the really tragic part is that if these disagreements were that big uh, 
20 years ago when the domestic situation uh, in both the Palestinian territories and in Israel was uh, much less polarized than it is uh, today. Uh, that means that, of course, the chance that any chance of reaching a you know, sensible agreement today uh, is 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 even further away. I mean, not only because of what is clearly what is happening in Gaza, of course, which in itself will seed uh, will will, uh, will will sow the seeds of future violence, but because extremists in both camps have become more powerful than ever. We have an ultra nationalist government in Israel, which has made openly genocidal statements concerning the fate of the people in Gaza, concerning the, concerning the fate of the Palestinians. Netanyahu in September went to the UN and showed a map of Israel where the Palestinian territories didn't even exist anymore. And he presented that as his vision of the new, what he called the new Middle East. And so clearly you have, you know, Netanyahu himself and factions within the Israeli government who that, that clearly aim at essentially ethnically cleansing uh, what they consider to be, uh, you know, uh, Israel um, of the Palestinians. And I think when a lot of people look at what is happening in Gaza today, and they they they, they clearly see that it's not an anti-terrorist operation aimed at wiping out Hamas. It's a terrorist operation aimed at causing as much uh, uh, death and destruction in Gaza that Israel can get away with, with, I think, the quite clear aim of um, you know, expelling as many Gazans from the Gaza Strip mm. that Israel can, uh, again, get away with, which won't be all the Gazans, but I think that you know, they are hoping to expel a good number of, of Gazans. And so it's pretty clear, you know, that this, thing, doesn't, Thomas. this doesn't Thomas, end well yeah, in any way. But let me, let me just interrupt you, Thomas, for a second. The point yeah. about the, the problem, surely, is that it's an intractable problem. Because if you've got Netanyahu on the one hand saying that he wants an Israeli state to not include um, a place where Palestinians call home, if you like, there are already Palestinians who live in Israel. Um, and work in Israel, and, and, and there are plenty of, of people who are not necessarily uh, of the Jewish faith who, who live in Israel. I presume he sees that as the future, whereby there would still be Palestinians living in Israel, they just wouldn't have um, a Palestinian homeland, if you, if you might want to call it that. But on the other hand, you've got the Palestinians, regardless of Hamas, um, many of whom would like to see the destruction of Israel backed by Iran, backed by uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon. So I don't really see any way out of this at all. I just don't think there is in any way, shape or form um, a solution at all. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, I think when it comes to Hamas, uh, I think it's, it's important to uh, make a difference between the Hamas charter and clearly the Hamas charter is genocidal. It yeah. does call for the you know, death or the expulsion of all uh, uh, Jews from what they consider to be Palestinian land. But at the same time, it would be, I think, naive uh, to uh, deny the fact that, you know, politically speaking, Hamas has also shown a great degree of flexibility over the years, whether that was announcing ceasefires or even uh, being uh, willing to accept a two-state solution as far back as in 2004. So, so well, that's I think off that's the table now, isn't it? Isn't the two-state two solution now off the table? Absolutely. I mean, but the point is that it really, what we, the, the, the really dramatic part of all this is that when you look at the actual proposals and at the actual situation on the ground, you wonder if there was ever a chance for an actual two-state solution. Uh, you know, if you look at what the West Bank has been since the mid-90s, again, as I said, this Swiss cheese of uh, Israel, uh, of, of Palestinian enclaves and, uh, and, and Israeli settlements, you know, even back then, it was almost impossible to conceive a geographically coherent um, two-state solution encompassing, you know, most of the uh, most of the West Bank, and if, that's one of the reasons why that agreement didn't really um, come to uh, come into being. Of course, now for political reasons, it's even harder to uh, imagine. You know, the settlements are much more than they were 20 years ago. There's way more settlers than there were 20 uh, than there were 20 years ago. But at the same, so a two-state solution at the moment does seem as inconceivable yeah. as ever it but does. at the same time kind of one state solution that you were pointing at earlier uh that's really not what netanyahu has in mind because let's not forget that uh you know that the, the uh, for is israel conceives itself 
understandably, as a Jewish state, yeah. which has to maintain Thomas, its to, Jewish stop, character sorry, we, and a majority we, we, we've of got Jews. To, we've got to so stop. They, they we've, got to, can't we've got to stop, Thomas. Sorry, I must, I, must, of I must stop you. We've got to yeah. move on. I'm sorry. We're out of time. Thank you very much indeed. I think that's a pretty good summation of what uh, is the problem here uh, in the Middle East. That